Hi, social studies teachers. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you five tools that I think are pretty cool and easy to use and kind of geared specifically towards social studies teachers. So, I mean, check it out. So I'm gonna go over a couple of geography games with you. I'm gonna go over a great website, which is really nice as far as like primary sources and artifacts. Uh, a nice idea for like a virtual tour uh, through somewhere. And then also a situation where like a choice board kind of thing um, where you have kids research or do some sort of project and you want them ultimately to show their work in some sort of presentation or video or picture or something like that. So I'm gonna talk you through that one. All right, so come along with me. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is these two little games. And the first one is Smarty Pins. It's kind of like trivia meets geography. It's kind of addicting, can't lie to you. So let me just kind of show you how it works. So basically you click on the link, Smarty Pins, and it'll take you, you hit start a new game. And you could pick categories. I'm kind of just picking anything. And then what it'll do is it'll give you a clue here. So I guess this is entertainment here. And you have to try to figure out where on the map this place is. So where is County General Hospital? And then I could just basically put this where I think it is. So if I think it's Philadelphia, I would hit there. I was way off. So I lost 651 miles. And the goal is you have a thousand miles and as soon as you run out of your thousand miles, you are done. And it looks like I'm not on pace for a very good round. Um, and that's it, you keep on going. And like I said, you can pick arts and cultures or you can pick uh, whatever you want, but it's just a really kind of fun way. It's kind of addicting uh, for kids to explore trivia and also dropping the pins. So where the hamburger got his name, somewhere in Germany, let's try Frankfurt and not as bad, but I'm not doing so well. Okay, so you get the idea, that's Smarty Pins. So the next little game I wanna show you is called GeoGuessr. And this is similar in the sense where it's kind of like geography, guessing where on the map you were, but the difference is instead of a trivia kind of question, in this one, what they'll do is literally drop you off in the middle of kind of nowhere, and you need to walk around and figure out where you are based on clues, road signs, um, people uh, you know, in stores or um, any, I guess anything, any, any kind of clue that you could find to figure out where you are. So let me show you. So if I hit just daily challenge, it's gonna drop me off somewhere. So here I am, literally in the middle of nowhere. And I have to walk around and figure out where I am. So this one is a lot, I guess, longer than the Smarty Pins game where that's pretty quick. This one might take you maybe, I don't know, five minutes or so to figure out where you are. But after you walk around enough, and I don't you know, necessarily need to take you through this whole place, this is actually truly in the, in the middle of nowhere. This is pretty crazy. Um, what they'll do is, and I can look around and look at my scenery, so maybe I can recognize that mountain range. I mean, I can't, but maybe one of you can. And then ultimately, once you get some sort of clues and you think you know where you are, you can drop your pin, kind of like the last game. So let's just say, hypothetically, I think I'm somewhere in South America. I would drop it, and turns out I was. All right. Um, and then you'd play next round. So it's kind of the same idea, only hopefully here I'm less in the middle of nowhere and you can kind of drive around on the highway. And like I said, eventually you'll come to some sort of road sign that you can maybe look at and zoom in and see if you can get an idea where you are. All right, so that's GeoGuessr. Again, pretty fun and um, just a little bit more difficult for sure than the Smarty Pins game. All right, moving on here. So this one here is not a game, this is a, a site. So it's Google Arts and Culture, and I actually I just stumbled upon this, and I was surprised I just had because it's it's pretty wonderful and robust. Um, and of course it's run by Google, so it's got a lot of stuff going on here. But basically the idea is you can pick kind of, here, let me move my head. You can pick a figure, an event, you can pick a artist, you can pick kind of anything and explore and there's really amazing kind of pictures and artifacts just for that event or person. So let me show you what I mean. So let's just say we do historic events and we wanna do, I don't know, the American Civil War. And what we'll have down here is all these really great kind of pictures of kind of the address and just really cool stuff. Um, artwork from that area. Like I said, a lot of great stuff that's directly from then. Um, pictures and letters and I said artifacts, like these are the drumsticks, I guess, for someone who's playing at the Ford's Theater on the night that, um, he was assassinated, you know, so that, so just stuff like that. So I said, we can spend hours and hours on the site, but I just want to show you basically, that's kind of the idea. Like I said, you can explore different events or different people or kind of whatever you want. So this could be really good for you as a teacher, just to kind of use the pictures as a discussion point or for kids, I'm sure, or some sort of other piece too. So that's Google Arts and Culture. 
All right, and now this one here, let's say hypothetically you'd love to go to Rome, but of course you can't take your kids to Rome. Now with technology, it's pretty great that you can kind of take your kids on a virtual tour. So this is what I'm making with a teacher right now on a virtual tour of Rome. So let me, again, just kind of show you. It's really easy to build, which is great. You kind of just put in your locations. Um, so here we are. So this is one that's in the works right now. So this is different places in Rome. So here we are in the Colosseum. And what's really cool is that you can put anything you want them to do. So at their very first stop, maybe you want them to watch a video about the Colosseum. It could be a video you find or a video you make yourself. You can put some information here if you want them to read it, answer questions, that kind of thing. Um, and then my favorite part about the whole thing is that I think that when they're at every place, I mean, you could just go there, which is cool. But what's great is that it integrates with Google Maps so you can like walk around and stuff like that. So hypothetically, if you want to drop them off in the Colosseum, not only are they in the Colosseum, which is amazing, but they can walk around the Colosseum a little bit. Right, so, and then after they walk around the Colosseum, maybe they go to the next place. Okay, they go to the Pantheon, and here we are. We shoot over to there, same thing. You can learn some stuff. And then ultimately, if you want to drop inside the Pantheon and look at it from the inside 360 view. So it's just a really easy way to kind of take them really anywhere, and it's not hard to make, which is, is pretty great. So that is your tour builder. Um, through Google. You can see it's still in beta, so there's probably a couple things that maybe don't work, but so far it's been pretty great as far as my work with it. All right, and then the final thing I have for you is this. So this is not necessarily specifically for social studies, but this is um, something that I think could help you. So basically, in a world full of a thousand different tech tools, how do you know which one to choose if you want to do a presentation uh, for the kids and there's so many different options or you want the kids to make a video like what's good what's free what's kid friendly that kind of thing so kind of what i've done is i've gone through so many tools and filtered out what i think are the best ones the free ones the good ones um and i've made this kind of on a list of way narrow down list and then what i'll do is that we can communicate and ultimately you can say my project is this and it's for this age level and we'll narrow it down again in the end you end up having maybe just three, four or five options for your kids or even just one. Um, but beyond the, just the idea of, hey, now I've kind of filtered out the best choices for you, what I've also done, this is an example of one I'm working with a teacher right now, is besides the fact that I've picked, you know, we narrowed down to five choices, the idea here is that you as a teacher don't need to necessarily know everything there is to know about this. So you can just give this document to your kids. They can pick something. And over here, it tells them exactly how to log in. And I've made resources that are like, all right, here's how to start a video. And here's what to do once you're in there. And once you're done, here's how to share your link with your teacher. Kind of all those things that they might be asking you and you don't really know maybe because you never use a tool. Everything should be right there. So the idea is it's good tools and the resources they need that they can kind of be pretty independent as far as it goes. So these are my choice boards that I would be glad to help you collaborate and kind of make together. So there you have it. Those are our, our top tools that I have for social studies teachers. Um, you can email me, of course, if you want to set up a time to get together, or you can book a time here at that link. All right. So thank you for watching.